Uh, namaste everyone. Thank you for joining in this video. Okay. So this is a new video series that I have uh, started. The announcement is of course uh, made on Facebook and WhatsApp. If you are into WhatsApp groups basically. So this is a video series of uh, learning the Lagna. Okay. And uh, this is where I'll be sharing the basics of all the Lagnas and how the, you know, the Lagnas can be interpreted okay so i'll be putting out a new video on the friday of every week okay i usually put out my videos at eight o'clock in the afternoon indian standard time and that is when you can expect these videos to come up okay so of course this is going to be a recorded series and if you have any doubts you know you can always ping me at my whatsapp number that is always given in the description box okay so let's begin Right. So the first lagna that we'll be discussing today is, of course, the Aries lagna. Okay. So Aries lagna, it is symbolized by the ram. Okay. The mountain goat. And uh, this ram is famous for eagerly running headfirst into obstacles. Okay. So what it means is it indicates a person who can be prone to head injuries. And someone who attempts to surmount his or her problems by excessive thinking. Okay. And this emphasis on the head is compounded by Aries being the first house in the natural zodiac. And because Mars is, you know, is known for its aggressive behavior, it actually gives all Arians a tendency for displaying idiosyncratic behavior. Okay. So it's a strong word I am using, but this is reality. All right. Now, these behaviors, they may be extroverted because Mars itself is a very extrovert planet who likes to go and get things done. Okay. And Mars is a planet which also indicates a general predisposition to violence. Okay. And that violence may manifest either through an accident or through an argument. Okay, and Mars is also the natural significator of accidents. Okay, and this tendency for accidents is reinforced by the rulership of Mars of the eighth house. Okay, so if for Aries Lagna, Mars also simultaneously rules the eighth house as the Lord of Scorpio. So this eighth house also rules accidents. Okay, and uh, since the eighth house is said to be since scorpio is said to be you know is said to be co-ruled by co-ruled by uh, ketu so this reinforcement is for her further enhanced okay because ketu represents violence ketu represents fanaticism okay ketu also represents headlessness so accidents usually happen in a moment of indecision when all of a sudden the person becomes headless and maybe bangs or crashes into something okay uh, now, most of the characteristics of Mars, they also characterize Pitta, okay? Pitta is the dosha which Mars rules, and it is a very impatient dosha, okay? And this dosha is very often predominant in Arians, okay? Why? Because sun gets exalted in the, you know, in the lagna, that means in Aries, okay? This fiery sun gets exalted in the ascendant of an Aries lagna. And this dedication to intensity is compounded by the fact that the sun, which is, of course, uh, Atimitra or Paramitra or the best friend of Mars, is exalted in the first house as the lord of the fifth house. Okay. So this rapid, you know, powerful combination in which the fiery Mars and sun, they come together, it may create you know, it may create a lot of impatience, okay? It may create a lot of, you know, a lot of impatience or a lot of intolerance in uh, Arians towards those who do not share their rapid way of thinking and acting, okay? And if this impatience is unchecked, then it can develop into frustration. And if the frustration is not controlled, it can actually snowball into anger that is being held back. Okay, now Mars, this ascendant Lord Mars is again exalted in Capricorn, which is the 10th house. So what happens is the 
Aries native will invariably and innately enjoy great motivation and ambition. And it tends to pioneer things well. Okay. And uh, the ruler of Capricorn, which is Saturn, it gets debilitated in the first house. Okay. And since Mars uh, represents sudden bursts of energy and Saturn represents stamina, Arians, they do not strategize well for the longer term. Okay. So that is one reason why if you were an Aries native, you should be often reminded that you will enjoy maximum success in life when you slow down and you consolidate your gains. Okay. The other important thing to consider for Aries Lagna is that Mars, which is the Lord of Lagna, gets depiliated in Cancer, which again is the fourth house. Okay, and the fourth house is the house of home. So what it does to the Aries native is that it militates the native towards a life away from one's homeland and a disinclination to settle down. Okay. And another reason why Aries natives are said to roam about like rams is that Jupiter is a mutually good friend of Mars. Okay. So in case of Aries Lagna, Jupiter rules the ninth house and the twelfth house. So because Jupiter is such a good friend, the matters of the ninth house and the twelfth house, they are always at the forefront in the life of an Aries native. Okay. And... Uh, this uh, fourth house weakness in Aries Lagna because as I said you know Mars debilitates in the sign of moon it promotes disagreements with the mother particularly if the moon okay which of course represents the fourth lord or is the significator of the mother is you know is afflicted and uh, the potential for differences okay there is a great potential for differences there is a great potential for separation from siblings. Why? Because Mercury is the lord of the third and sixth houses. Okay. And it is the dire enemy of Mars. It is the worst enemy of Mars. Okay. So Mercury, the ruler of the third and sixth houses, promotes this disagreement or this, you know, separation from siblings. Okay. And this usually blends together in an attractive way because the sixth house is the indication of suffering and the third house is. The indication of siblings so this combination of mercury ruling the third and the sixth house actually indicates suffering due to siblings okay and since uh, the sun rules the fifth house of progeny and is also a friend of mars so these you know these natives they may be very very interested in creating or producing offsprings okay but then uh, although they are interested in producing offsprings they usually you know, do not produce a large, you know, a large number of children or a large brood because the sun does not signify children. Children are signified by Jupiter. Okay. But this natural, you know, fairiness of the sun and Mars, it tends to reduce fertility because pitta, which is a very, you know, very hot fluid, it burns the sperm or ovum. Okay. So this is about, you know, about Aries Lagna. It can also be this information that I reveal can also be used as a you know as a blank chart prediction, okay. And you can similarly do predictions for the other lagnas. Of course, I'll be putting out videos every you know every Friday, as I said. So I hope you enjoyed this video, the information contained in this video. And if you like the content, please like the channel, subscribe to the content. And should you have any requirements regarding a reading of your chart, then kindly WhatsApp at a number provided in the description box. Okay. So the description box will also contain links to the WhatsApp groups where I teach Vedic astrology for free every Sunday at eight o'clock Indian Standard Time. And there is another class on Kala Sarpa, which I have started live classes that happen every Saturday from eight o'clock Indian standard time. So I hope to see all of you there. And uh, I hope to see all of you in my next video too. So that's it for me in this video. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you soon. Om Guru Pinamaha.